Hello everyone. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to make a snake game uh, running in the terminal using nothing but C and the end curses library. Um, it's uh, I would say it's an intermediate uh, level project. So if you know the basics of C, you can definitely follow along and make your own game. Um, we're going to be covering how to draw the snake. Uh, spawn the berries, uh, make the boundaries and display the score and I think you will find it pretty useful and interesting so um, yeah this is the game as it is right now and yeah let's get started before we start I just want to give a mention to Nir Lichman who made a video not too long ago about a uh, snake game in C using curses the first parts of this video are going to be pretty heavily referenced from that one, but we will move past that and add some functionality that I think makes it play more like a regular snake game. Uh, definitely check out his video on that, which will be linked in the description, and uh, just check out his channel in general, there's some pretty good stuff there. Okay, so here we are in the terminal. I'm just in this code directory that I use for some of my projects. The first thing we need to do to get set up is to make sure that we have the right tools to build and run the program. So on Linux, that would be sudo apt get install build essential. So what this will do is give you um, the CC command, which will allow you to build your project. And you also will need to run sudo apt get install. Uh, lib and curses so these two will give you access to the uh, curses um, library so once we have both of those installed we can make a new directory and just call it snake cd into that directory and make a new file call it snake.c okay so to begin with we're going to include curses.h which will give us access to all of the uh, curses functionalities um, inside of main we are going to make a few variables here so to begin with int screen width and we'll make that 40 and a screen height for now we'll make that 20 to initialize the screen we're going to make a new variable called win which is a pointer to the window struct using the init screen function from curses now to start taking user input let's just call that put a comment there initialize screen now take player input. So there's a couple functions we're gonna use to start taking player input. The first is keypad when true. So this will make it so we're now taking input from the player. Uh, no delay when true makes it so it is it's the func the program is non-blocking which basically means that it's not going to wait for your input it's just going to keep running and I'm also just going to put this here curse set zero which is going to hide the cursor basically for the snake we have a vec2 for the head and we'll start him off at zero zero and we have a vec2 for the direction which will be 1 in the x-axis, 0 in the y-axis, and that should be it for now for the snake. Now we can enter the game loop, which we'll define just using a while true. To get the player input, we have a variable called pressed, which is going to be equal to w get ch win so this will get the uh, character press from the player so now we just want to do some uh, if statements 
to react to the player's input. So I'll just skip through that. Okay, so here's some basic input handling. Um, if the player presses the left key, then direction X is negative. Um, if the player presses the right key, direction X is positive. Um, key up, direction Y is negative. Key down, direction Y is positive. Um, it's worth noting that the Y axis is flipped usually in these cases, so Y counts down. Uh, that's why um, in when we press key up, we are making direction Y negative and key down direction Y is positive. And if we press um, backslash E, which uh, is escape, we're going to break from this uh, loop and we'll handle exiting uh, afterwards. So now after we get the input from the player and update the direction, we're going to update the position of the snake's head um, using that direction. After taking the input and updating the variables, we can draw to the screen. So the first thing we need to do on every loop is erase what was drawn before. Then we can use MV add TH, which takes the Y and X coordinates and a character that we're going to draw. So for the Y value, we're going to use head.y. The X value, we're going to use head.x. And for the character, we're just going to use a capital O. Now we're at the end of our loop. Uh, as things are, the computer is going to do this as fast as it can. And if it does that, we're not going to be able to follow what's happening. So we're going to tell the computer to wait a certain amount of time at the end of each frame uh, so that we can see what's going on. To do that, we can use you sleep and just say how many microseconds to sleep for, which will be for now. 125,000 microseconds and you see we're getting an error here which is basically saying it's not declared that's because we need to include unit std.h and that error should go away so once we break out of the loop, we're going to need to close the window that we created. Uh, curses gives us the function end win to do that. And then we just return zero and that should be it. So to compile, we just use CC for the C compiler. Snake.c is our input file and we need to link the curses library. Now if we list out, we can see we have an output called a.out. So to run our executable, we just need to do dot slash a dot out. You can see now we have our, the head of our snake is being drawn to the screen and the up, down, left and right arrow keys are changing the position. You might notice that if I press left while going right, the head will actually change directions going to go that way. And if I press up while going down, the head will change directions to go that way as well. Now that's a problem because that's not how snake usually works. You're not able to just turn 180 degrees on the spot. So we're gonna have to address that. Another thing I wanna address is that moving left and right, you go a lot less distance than moving up and down. You could probably notice that as well. So we're gonna address that. And also the snake has no body yet. So we're gonna work on that as well. Now if I press escape, I'll leave, the window is going to be closed, and now I'm back in my terminal. So the first thing I want to address is the fact that we can turn 180 degrees on the spot. Uh, to prevent this, we just have to do a check when we take our input to see what direction we're going. So if I press the left key, and I'm currently going right, I just want to continue, which will go to the next iteration of the loop, and it won't do any anything else here, meaning that my input was ignored. If I press the right key and I'm moving to the left, I also want to continue. So 
So the next thing I want to look at is the fact that we move a lot slower horizontally than we do vertically. So my solution to this is just to multiply the x coordinate by 2 when we decide to draw things. That will make everything a lot wider and you'll see we're going to do that across the board on things that we draw. So all of the calculations will be done in the regular coordinate system and then we'll, we'll multiply by 2 here just so that it draws out a little bit more naturally. So we can look at what those changes did uh, by compiling again again snake.c-ln curses and just dot slash a that out. So now the snake is jumping one character basically when we draw him uh, when he's moving horizontally. Um, also I'm pressing right while moving left and left while moving right and I can't change the direction on the spot and this is more like how the snake is supposed to move. So before we start drawing the rest of the snake's body, let's add some berries that the snake can eat to increase the score and increase the snake's size. Um, so we make a global variable score and initialize it as at zero. Um, we also want to add a berry as well. It should be just a berry, which will be a vec2. And we can spawn the berry at a random location. Uh, we can do that by doing using rand modulo screen width for the x position and rand modulo screen height for the y position. So we're getting an error here using the rand function. That's because we need to include the std lib h library that will give us access to the random function. So now in our draw section, we can draw the berry as well. So we would draw it at berry.y, berry.x. And for now, we'll just use the at symbol for the berry. So in the update function, after we move the head of the snake, we need to check if it's on the same coordinate as the berry. And that would mean that we are going to eat the berry and increase the score. So to do that, we can do if head.x equals berry.x and head.y equals berry.y. That means they must be on the same position. And what we want to do is increase the score by one. And now we need a new position for the berry. So we can do berry.y or berry.x equals again rand modulo screen width and berry.y equals rand modulo screen height. Almost forgot, we need to multiply the berry's x position by 2 uh, so that we're consistent with where we're drawing things. So let's see what we have so far. Um, if we compile and run, we see that we have a berry that's spawning. If we eat the berry, it'll go to a new random position and our score will go up. Uh, we're going to just have to trust for now that the score is going up because we're not printing it, but we will soon. And the next thing we have to do is we know in snake when you eat a berry, the snake should get longer by one segment. So that's going to be the next thing to do. So it's a little tricky to draw the body of the snake, but I'll give you my approach. So we'll start out by initializing an array of segments. Um, which are vec2s and for now we'll just give it a length of 256 which is essentially the maximum length of the snake. Okay so in the update section we need to do two things. The first thing we're going to do is loop backwards through the snake from the tail to the head. So 
int i equals score i greater than zero i minus minus and what we're gonna do is set the position of our current segment to the position of the segment in front of it and right before we update the position of the head we set the first segment after the head equal to what the head was in the last frame. So now when we draw the snake, we need to loop through all of the segments first. So for i equals zero, i less than score, i plus plus, and we just use the same function mv add ch. Now we use segments i that y so that'll be that segments y position and segments i dot x which will be that segments x position don't forget we multiply by two and we're going to draw a lowercase o for that so let's see what we have now we can just compile and run again so now when we eat a berry we should add a segment to the snake. And the same thing. Each berry you eat should add one segment. And there you go. So now we have a snake moving around. And when we eat berries, it grows according to the score. Okay, so that's the gist of our game done. Uh, we have our snake running around collecting berries. Um, as we collect berries, the length of the snake is increasing and we're updating the tail properly. Uh, we're missing a couple things like uh, printing the score to the screen, uh, drawing the border, and also there is no lose condition right now, so the snake can run through itself and nothing really happens. But this is really the bulk of it. I feel like we've definitely made a lot of good progress, and this is in just under 100 lines of code. Uh, I hope you had a good time, and if you followed along, I definitely think you can expand on this and make it into a more polished uh, game. And let me know in the comments if you want to see a continuation of this or anything like that. And yeah, thanks for watching.